Hi everybody, let's talk about oboe reeds for a minute. So you're going to be a band director one day and uh, you're not going to be making reeds for your oboe students, so what are you going to do? Um, they're going to have to buy them from somewhere. You, know, you might be buying reeds for them out of your band budget or they're going to be responsible for that on their own. Uh, reed makers are constantly changing, coming and going, so I'm not going to put any recommendations in this video, but you are always welcome to contact me uh, anytime, you know, this year, next year, 10 years from now, to see uh, if I have any recommendations for who's making good oboe reeds. And I'll give some to your teacher as well. Uh, so your student's going to buy the reed. It's going to come in the mail. How do we know if it's working? What are some things that we can do? Okay, so since you're not going to be using knives and such to scrape your reeds, there's not a lot that you can do to fix reeds, but we can uh, make some guesses about why they're not working the way we want them to. Okay, so when you get a reed, uh, the first thing you need to do is make sure your students have a proper reed case for it, something that is holding the reed securely and allowing them to dry. So those mailing tubes that they come in like this, very little air circulates in there and these reeds get nasty really fast. So make sure that they have a, a good reed case. And again, I'm always happy to give you recommendations about that. Um, there are things to avoid with reed cases, so feel free to check with me. When you take the reed out of the case and it's dry, you want to look at the opening. So when the reed is dry and hasn't, nothing's been done to it, you want it to have kind of an elliptical opening. Um, not round. This reed, if it's open like this, the student is going to have to bite that reed closed with their mouth. So they're going to get tired really fast, it's not going to sound good, and they're going to be flat. If the reed is completely shut, then they're not going to be able to blow any air through it. So you'll see your students like blowing so hard and they're not getting any sound. That reed is shut. Either the reed itself is worn out and it's collapsed, closed, or they are biting so hard that they are squeezing the reed shut. Uh, those are both bad things. Uh, but when it's dry, you can't fully tell. So you're, you and your students need to soak your reeds in water. Okay, room temperature water. Uh, this is just a film canister. You can use a pill bottle or a shot glass or anything. Uh, those little plastic solo cups work well for this. You want room temperature water that goes up halfway up the thread so all of the cane is being soaked. New reeds that just came out of the mail should only be soaked for like 30 seconds. Old reeds can be soaked for longer, you know, five minutes, one minute, two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. The longer you have to soak the reed for it to feel comfortable, the more worn out it is. And if your students are having to soak their reeds forever, they need new reeds. Okay, so I put these reeds in here and then they have to get in the habit of getting the moisture out but if they don't do that when they stick it in the oboe and blow they're gonna spit tons of water down inside the instrument so once you've soaked the reed the closed one should open up you know into an elliptical shape the round one is gonna get even rounder so I can tell with a dry reed that if it's if it's open round I am not going to want my student to use that reed. If I can, I'm going to try and send it back. If the reed opens to an ellipse, then you're in better shape. So they should be able to blow on it. You have to use pretty good air pressure, right? That's something oboists tend not to do. We tend to, especially young beginners I'm talking about, we blow this gentle stream of air. No, it's like your birthday candles are 10 feet away. So don't worry about any particular sound that it's supposed to make, but it just should respond easily. You'll see a lot on the internet about the crow, which is the sound the reed makes uh, when you don't use your lips to help it, and you just blow into it. Commercial reeds don't crow the way they're supposed to, so we're not even going to worry about that. Okay, so that's the first main thing. Big open round reeds don't, don't bother. Um, they'll learn to bite. Their tone is going to be unpleasant and they're going to be out of tune. Reeds that are closed just need to be replaced. So the problem is oboe reeds don't last very long unfortunately. Okay the next thing you want to do to check a reed is make sure it's not leaking. So you're going to plug the back with your finger and you're going to blow into the top and you should not hear or feel any air hissing out the sides of the reed. If you do, if that reed is leaking then it's going to be out of tune. 
and the student probably won't be able to play the higher notes that require more air support. Some commercial reeds are going to come wrapped in some kind of plastic substance. Uh, avoid those. Okay? They're covering for the fact that their reeds are leaking. Also, if your if your um, oboe reed has a wire on it, right here, don't buy don't buy oboe reeds with a wire. Don't use oboe reeds with a wire. English horn reeds have a wire on them, bassoon reeds have wires on them, but not oboe. Again, that's compensating for poor design and poor workmanship. They're using the wire to try and force the reed to seal. Okay, so you don't want reeds that are too open. You don't want reeds that leak. You need to soak your reeds in water. If you over soak, like I just did, it makes them open up more. If you use cold water, it makes them open up more. Uh, that could be a trick for resurrecting a worn out reed, but if your reed is open to begin with, then that cold water is going to make it unplayable. Your students must not soak their reeds in their mouth like you would for a, a clarinet or a saxophone reed, uh, because you're only wetting the outside surface and your body temperature of 98 degrees causes the reed to open, right? So we have the same problem over and over again. Soak your reeds in water, uh, don't over soak new reeds. Um, no wires, no um, cellophane or saran wrap or as we call it fish skin, none of that on the outside of the reed. Uh, if your students are very flat, the reed itself could be to blame and there's not a lot to do about that except to replace it, but often their mouth is too open uh, or they're not blowing with enough air support, so if you fix both of those things. So I should like to fit a finger between my teeth, so they should not be biting their mouth all the way closed, but if they're really open, then they're going to be flat. And if they're not blowing firmly enough, they're going to be flat. Um, if their mouth is just kind of resting on the reed, it's going to be flat. You have to pucker, really, like you just bit into something sour or like you're whistling, and then you roll your lips in. Okay. That firmness around the reed helps us stay in tune. So I actually have four commercial reeds here that I bought and have not even looked at. So let's take a look at them. Reed strength, soft, medium soft, hard, whatever. There's no merit badge for a hard reed. The softer the reed is, that's code for um, we've scraped so much off that it sounds really flimsy. Hard reeds, that's code for we didn't scrape this reed enough. So you you know, oboe students do not need to graduate to harder and harder reeds. You have to find a reed that's well balanced for them. So I have some medium reeds and some medium soft reeds from a particular reed maker, and I'm just going to demonstrate them for you. So I soak them for a second, get the water out. This one has a nice, reasonable opening. Fit it in the oboe. All right, I should be able to play it. I should be able to blow through it and not feel like it's pushing back at me really hard. That one's actually pretty good. I could spend a minute with that and make it a little better. Here's another one. This one is open more. More, it's not round, but it's open more. So let's see how that changes the sound. So do you hear how there's that ha, there's that air sound before the tone starts? Because the reed is more open, it takes more air pressure to make it vibrate. So here's what you can do. With a reed that's too open, you have to soak it first, and then you can grab it right above the thread and squeeze. If you do this to a dry reed, you'll break it, okay? But you can squeeze it pretty firmly, and what we're doing is we're breaking down the fibers and we're training the reed to be more relaxed. So having done that, it's now a much smaller opening. Now, the reed remembers, so when it dries out, and then I soak it again, it's going to be open again, so I'll have to repeat that process. But let's see if it's any better now. Okay, and that's tolerable now. So you can, if the reed is, is moderately too open, you can train it to be more close. So those were medium soft. Here are some mediums. They both have average openings. Let's try this one first. It's a little more closed. If I had to choose, I would rather have the reed be a little too closed than have it be a little too open. Of course, the, the open reed will last longer, but the student's going to have to break it in and it's going to be unpleasant for them. Again, 
that wasn't too bad. That one had a leak though. I could feel air hissing on the side of my lip, so I probably would not give that to a student. And then this last one is open pretty far. Uh, it's a little harder to read. It sounds a little crazier. So that reed is really boomy and flat, and it's leaking. I can feel the air hissing, but let's see what happens. Again, I'm going to squeeze it, and then we'll play it again. I'm squeezing pretty hard. Rem remember, only a soaked reed. If you squeeze a dry reed, you'll crack it. All right, so that closed it down, but it's really flat. Okay, so your option with a really flat reed is to find someone to work on it. Okay, I know that my embouchure and my air support are correct, so it's got to be the reed. This one is not super great. Okay, so the problem with reeds is they're expensive, but you have to be prepared to sift through and find the ones that work for you uh, and work for your students. It's always best to partner with a real human being to make reeds for your, your kids. Uh, that's, I know that's not always possible, so again, you can contact me for recommendations about commercial reeds to buy, but just be prepared that some of them are going to come, a certain percentage, and you're going to have to throw them out, just like clarinet or saxophone reeds. Uh, oboe reeds are 20 bucks a pop, though, so that's unfortunate. Uh, so, in review, soak your reeds in water, not too long, room temperature water. Make sure all the cane is covered. No reeds with a wire, no reeds with uh, tape wrapped around the bottom. Check them for leaks. If the air is leaking out the sides when you cover the back, don't use that reed. We don't want reeds that are super open. We don't want reeds that are completely shut after they've been soaked. With a reed that's kind of open, you can squeeze it down uh, to help it close down and that will help bring the pitch up and also help it not be as hard for the student. So we want the reed to work well so that the student doesn't have to clamp down. They can concentrate on moving their air and working on their sound. If all they're doing is biting on the reed, that's all that they're thinking about. Okay, I hope that helps. Please uh, feel free to contact me anytime if you have oboe issues with your future students. Good luck, everybody.